there, welcome to Michigan Tax Chat today, and we're hoping that you can ask lots of questions along the way. My name is Chrissy Grotsky. I'm one of the admission counselors here. We're going to do a little bit of presentation, but I also have some students here that will comment on some of their experiences. Let me let them introduce themselves to you. Hi, my name is Angie Rubeck. I just finished up my first year studying electrical engineering, and I'm from Crystal Lake, Illinois. Hi, my name is Cora. I'm going into my third year of geological engineering and my minor in mining here at Tech. Um, and I'm from Duluth, Minnesota. All right, well, let's get started. So I know you probably have received some mailings from us, and a lot of it talks about us being crazy smart. So we want to talk a little bit first about what that means to us. We actually surveyed our students and our staff and our faculty and came up with a bunch of adjectives that describe Michigan Tech and crazy smart sort of rose to the top. So we are a little bit crazy. We do things like float concrete canoes and we have a great loud pet band and our students really are pretty adventurous traveling more than nine hours away from home. But they're also really smart. Academically they do really well. Um, we have high placement rates, 94% after six months after graduation. And so we actually survey our students and ask them if they're currently in a job in their field, in graduate school, or in the military. And 94% of them, six months out, are already placed. Uh, we currently have the 10th highest starting salaries in the nation for public universities. So definitely some crazy smart students here. So they're not only graduating and doing great things, but they're coming back to Michigan Tech and um, teaching our students that are currently going through the classes all about what the experiences they have here. I think a lot of that stems from the classroom experience at Michigan Tech, our great um, placement rates. We our average class size is about 25 students, so you're really getting to know your professors on a first name basis. They're there to ask questions, open office hours, you're able to do research with them, um, and it's a great opportunity. What, was you, what makes Michigan Tech crazy smart for you guys? Um, well, crazy stuff for me that we do, definitely win a carnival, that's like early mid-February. Uh, we'll actually get a couple days off of school to go out in the snow and spend kind of all night um, building snow statues and just doing other crazy stuff. I definitely spent, I think it was 30, 30 hours, like over the course of the month on our statue. Uh, that was just a lot of fun, definitely really crazy. Um, then another thing is hockey games. Those are always really fun to go to and check out and they're free for students. You can get tickets to them, so there's just a lot of fun stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I always really like the cardboard boat races. So, because you mentioned our concrete canoe, but we also make boats out of cardboard in some of the first weeks of classes. So, um, a lot of residence halls will get together, and students will get as much cardboard as they can from places around town, get a whole bunch of rolls of duct tape, and those are the only two materials they use to make a boat that then, then we all go out and race on the portage and there's so many students and community members there cheering on it's really exciting. I think I saw more boats kind of just sink in yeah. the water than yeah. actually <laughs> succeed, but Yeah, that's part of the fun. Of fun yeah. <laughs> now for the biggest question that we get um, from students, where is Houghton? So how, how long did it take you guys to drive from home up to Houghton? It was about five or six hours for me. My drive is about seven and a half hours. So our average drive time is about nine hours. Many of our students come from all over the Midwest. I specifically work with students in the Chicagoland area, and you might be surprised, um, but we're about eight hours most often, and some of our students from Michigan are traveling 10, 12 hours. So even those that live in Michigan are often traveling a little bit of a distance. So um, we also have a really great incoming student profile, so our average student is about a 3.6 out of a 4.0 GPA and about a 26 ACT composite. So now half our students are above that and half our students are below that. So it might give you some idea as to where you fall in the range of what we're looking for for admissions. I do want to remind you if you do have questions, we do have a live chat going on, so feel free to type in any questions that you have along the way. Now academics, how did you like your classroom experience here at Michigan Tech? I've really liked it. My major particularly is kind of small, um, so a lot of my classes are less than 20 people. We'll have, you know, maybe 18 or so in some of my bigger classes, and then I've had classes all the way down to nine people. So you definitely get to know everyone really, really well. And even in the first week during orientation week, I was talking to my professors, you know, everyone like that. We were just, you know, able to stop in the hallway and chat with each other. and. So professors are really, really welcoming, and you, I like that you get to know everyone really well. 
Yeah, with me, because I've only had one year of classes here, so I was taking a lot of your basic um, classes that all incoming engineers have to take. They'll kind of group you up, so you'll see the same kids in your classes, but then even as a first year, I still had faculty teaching all my classes. Like, we had TAs in our class, but they just kind of collected homework. So it was the faculty that's actually teaching you and who you get to know really well. Like, they'll all have office hours, but then they'll say, oh, if my door's open, come on in. Yeah. So you can talk to them, they're all really open, and you just, you get to know the kids in your class really well, too. Now, many of our incoming students that are going to be freshmen this year, we had a chat on Tuesday, and a lot of them were asking about homework and how, what to expect in the classes and things like that. Um, just so you know, our classes are pretty difficult, so uh, we have a lot of support here on campus to make sure that you're successful in the classes. One of those opportunities are our learning centers. Those are department specific. For instance, if you're having trouble in a chemistry course, you might go to the chemistry learning center where you could possibly participate in a study group. There are people there who um, upper class and possibly graduate level students who you could ask questions of. So if you need a little bit of help along the way, clearly your professor is your first line of defense, but if you would like another opinion or someone else to break it down for you, possibly study for an exam, um, the learning centers are a great option for that too. So Michigan Tech started as a school of mines and we've come a long way since 1885. We now have about 130 majors here on campus. We're clearly known best for our College of Engineering. Over half of our students are engineers but we have made great majors in anthropology and business and psychology and the visual performing arts. So there's a lot of opportunities, um, whether you're an engineer who just wants to take a few classes in those areas or whether you might be majoring in sound design or audio production or finance, um, psychology, um, English, we have some great programs here at Michigan Tech. Now, um, something that you might hear, it's kind of a buzz term right now, is experiential learning. And I've noticed even, I see a lot of college materials being out at the college fair. That's something that we've been doing at Michigan Tech for years. It's part of our curriculum. It's really built in both inside and outside the classroom. So one of our biggest programs here is Enterprise. And so we have um, just around 25 enterprise teams that work on anything from a Formula One car to a satellite that we just launched in the space, some wireless communications, robotics, um, new building materials. As you can see, it's, there's a lot of options. Um, our students run these like a student business almost. So they're working on a project that's going out um, and being used or competing against other colleges and universities with what they've learned. And it's a great experience because you start your possibly freshman, mostly your sophomore year, and by the senior your senior year, you might have a leadership role. So you might be president of this organization. So there is some structure to it. There's majors from all across disciplines working on all these pro programs. So you might be a mechanical engineer who's working with a computer scientist, who's working with a business student who's helping you keep track of your accounting and things like that. So it's really almost like having your own small business. The Pavlis program here at Michigan Tech is also a pretty popular program. It is similar to the Enterprise program in the fact that you're creating something, but what's unique about this program is between your junior and senior year, you're actually taking this out to the town that you created it for. Um, we've had students go to Africa, Central and South America, and they're bringing things like an infant heart monitor that they've made um, for a town in Ghana, Africa that is not going to be on the power grid for 20 years. So um, this way they can tell when babies are born, if they have a heartbeat or not, if the baby's born in distress. They are bringing um, projects like biochar so that they have another source of fuel for energy. So all sorts of things that they're, they're doing. What's cool about that is you get to go to the town, see the people and um, that you're helping. Now the Honors Institute is another program at Michigan Tech. We also have a program called Research Scholars. Now these are, um, you do need a 30 on your ACT or higher to apply to these programs. And it's not an automatic in, but your uh, January, February of your senior year there will be an application process. Uh, what's nice about these programs is it gives you the opportunity to do an independent project or whether that's research or design work. And that starts your freshman year into your senior year and there's benchmarks that you need to meet along the way. So it is something that you're doing above and beyond your typical 
um, coursework. Also, it prepares you for different graduate school fellowship programs. So a lot of the professors or the mentors that you'll be working with as part of this program, if you're thinking about a Goldwater Scholars program or Fulbright or one applied the Marshall Scholars or what it might, whatever, they can help you um, and groom you, tell you resumes, um, what can build your resume, what can you do to make your interview stand out as part of these programs. And they also, honors program, not the research scholars, but the honors program has honors housing. So that's something that's a little bit more unique. The research scholars program is only engineers, so that is more what makes that program unique. And so if you'd like to live in a house or on a floor with all other honors students, that's an opportunity that is offered to you through that program. It also has some perks like some higher level access in the library and things like that. We do have a lot of opportunities to do undergraduate research here at Michigan Tech. One of our largest programs is our SURF program, our Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship. And so that's something that our students can apply for funding to do research here over the summer, whether it's a project of their own design or whether they're working with a faculty member who already has research going on. Um, and so it's a great opportunity, especially if that's your first research experience. You know, you might be working with a faculty member that you feel really comfortable with. It's a good way to get your feet wet. Um, have any of you guys heard of any of the research projects going on or done any internships here? I know a couple of the research um, projects that are going on. There's um, one in the, I don't remember which department it is, but there's one group where they're working on a new material to close wounds. And so right now they're doing work to make sure that you know it's going to be sterile if it goes into you know humans and and that it'll properly seal wounds and everything so that's one of the ones I know of. Nice, mm -hmm. really cool. Um, we also have a lot of opportunities to study abroad so if you've thought about doing that um, what's nice is that we have semester-long programs, year-long programs, short-term programs in the summer um, so no matter what your major is, there are lots of opportunities. Some of those programs require you to learn a language, some of them don't. Um, so if you're nervous about that, that's okay too. Uh, we also have the opportunity for you to do some internships abroad. So depending on what you're looking for in a study abroad program, our um, IPS department or International Programs and Services will help you identify which program is correct for you. I just wanted to say, oh, going sure. along um, with the whole experiential learning in general here, I've really liked it because you not only it's not unusual wait how am I trying to say this <laughs> you're kind of expected by the time you graduate that you will have done hands-on work in pretty much everything you're studying so it's not expected that you're going to go into a class and only you know look at the textbook and listen to what your professor is telling you it's expected that you're going to do some hands-on work whether it's through a lab or through one of you know enterprise or uh, research project. So I really like that because instead of just reading about an issue, you're working on it, you're touching it, you're building it, solving the problem yourself. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, we did have a question. Um, if I study abroad, do I have to know the language of the country I'm in? Um, honestly, you don't. Some of the programs are set up so it's actually a few of our faculty members or English-speaking faculty that are taking you around. They might be cultural courses, they might be major courses, so you might be taking some classes in English even if that is not the native language of wherever you might be going. So if that's something that you're apprehensive about, definitely talk with us and we can identify what programs are best for you. So career services here at Michigan Tech is a big, big, pretty big program. So we have a great department that will put on mock interviews, that helps you with resume building. They bring over 350 companies to campus every year, um, sometimes as part of our fall career fair or our spring career fair, and sometimes they're coming up whenever it is appropriate for the companies to do so. Have you guys gone to the career fair? Mm -hmm. So tell them a little bit of what it's like, because that's kind of how many companies did you get to talk to? Uh, well, because I had I went my first year, so it was kind of intimidating going up and talking to all the companies. Definitely taking that first step and actually going up there, and then knowing what to talk about. But it was an awesome experience um, just to go up there and get that feeling. Definitely. Um, but then career services all also help you with your resume. So I had them look over my resume, made it all nice. Um, but then, so it's kind of kind of intimidating, definitely though. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
We encourage it, um, and truthfully, some of the companies, even before the career fair, will put on little seminars about what their company's about or what types of positions they're looking for. And this is a really great idea for you to attend, even if you're not sure what you want to do, it's a great way to see what's out there in industry and what positions are available and what different companies are working on, so that's pretty cool. Um, we do have pretty um, high acceptance rate or um, placement rates as we've already talked about and high salary and I think a lot of this has to do with our career services being really proactive and making sure that um, our students have exposure to lots of different companies and, and opportunities. Now our career fair, they're not only interviewing you for um, job placement. They're also interviewing you for internships and co-ops. So I'm going to ask a question and so just answer in chat. Who knows the difference between an internship and a co-op? Okay, so close. So an internship is, um, an internship is usually short-term, something that happens over the summer most often, sometimes it's um, during the school year, but it's more of a shadowing or just a, a short-term experience. For a co-op, you're taking a semester off school and a summer and working for a company, so you really get that great experience, um, getting to know what the company does, really being well-prepared. Now, you did an internship, right, Cora? Mm -hmm. You want to tell them a little bit about what you did? Yeah, I did an internship after my first year here at school. Um, I was working un half a mile underground in an old iron mine in a high-energy particle physics laboratory. Um, so I got to do work with um, some particle physics equipment that was actually timing how long it takes a particle to fly from um, Chicago to northern Minnesota through uh, I think 750 kilometers of solid rock. So it was some really neat work. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we were all that um, had that opportunity. So I was a physics major, so that's pretty cool for me. Um, are the all the companies at the career fair in Houghton? Good question. Actually, the companies are coming from all over the nation. So many of our students are placed here in the Midwest with like Dow Chemical or Ford, GM, Chrysler, and some of them are looking at going as far as California, the East Coast, um, down in Texas. So we actually have um, a student from the Illinois area that I'm working with that's actually doing a co-op right now down in Texas this summer, or an internship down in Texas this summer. So there's a lot of stuff going on that's even beyond the Houghton area. Now we do have some opportunities here in Houghton um, to co-op and to intern. Um, some of the companies actually rent out space in the local area and provide those internships and co-ops right here. So no, you don't always have to go somewhere else. Um, we do have some here, but there are lots of experiences regardless of what you're looking for. So a little bit about student life. We've talked a lot about academics here, and as we alluded to in the beginning, um, our students do find a good balance. So a little bit of fun, a lot of hard work, and some of that fun starts with the 220 student organizations that we have here. What are you guys a part of? What organizations are you part of? Um, I'm part of Geology Club, and I've checked out Ridge Roamers as well, which is the rock climbing club here on campus. Okay. Uh, so I'm part of one group is Alpha Society, it's just kind of like a small group, we'll do social or service projects. Then I'm also part of Air Force ROTC, um, so I take classes and then also some other tough stuff in my free time out with them. Um, and then actually at our student radio station, WMTU, I'm a DJ there, so you can tune in Monday night, 6 to 8, um, like <laughs> online on the radio here, or we actually stream, uh, like online we're streaming so you can listen anywhere. Um, so that's a lot of fun just to do free time. And that's Eastern time for those of you that might oh, be in yeah. a different time zone. <laughs> um, as far as that's concerned, we have mixed martial arts clubs. We have a lot, of, you could even learn to swing dance if you want. So we have a lot of different clubs and organizations. And the nice part is, is that if you, there isn't an organization here that you're looking for, find a group of your friends and an advisor and we can um, help you start that organization too. So it's pretty flexible. Um, our clubs are always changing with what everyone's looking for, so definitely new ideas are always welcome. Uh, we also have great intramural and club sports. The intramural sports here are free to play as part of your experience tech, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you can 
play at club sports too. We have, for instance, men's soccer as club. So if you don't see it as our varsity level, we might be playing against other uh, universities, but at the club level. The intramural sports are really, really <laughs> fun to join. Yeah. I, I do a lot of, like I did uh, sand volleyball, flag football, water polo, a couple other ones. Um, but they're a really nice way to, you know, relax in the evenings, get a little of, bit of activity in, you know, between homework and everything. And you usually only play a couple games a week, so it's not a huge time commitment, but it's a really, really fun way to spend your time. What's your favorite intramural sport? Uh, flag football was my was fun. <laughs> nice. We also have a lot of visual performing arts opportunities here. So if you've been active with the theater, the choir, we have a huge pep band or jazz band here at Michigan Tech, our q and orchestra. There's lots of opportunities to continue that here. So um, what's nice, we do have theater majors here at Michigan Tech. We don't have music majors, but we do have minors in performance and composition. So if that's something you want to do academically or if it's something you just want to do for fun, uh, that definitely can happen. Now, as part of your experience tech fee, the visual performing arts performances that are put on by our students are actually free to you. And also, you get a whole lengthy list of other things that are part of your experience tech fee. So I shouldn't say free. It's a part of your student activities for you. You just don't have to pay every time you use it. You just need to show your student ID. Um, you give you access to our golf course. We have an 18-hole golf course here. Um, Mount Ripley, which is our ski hill, so that's definitely something you can utilize here up with our 200 plus average inches of snow. Um, we have wonderful rock climbing that our OEP department does now for equipment for that. Um, you would have to rent. Our outdoor adventure program has equipment rental for kayaks and canoes and backpacking equipment and hiking. This is a really cool place to take advantage of some of the adventures that happen here at Michigan and the Keweenaw. Um, have you guys done anything this summer that's been pretty fun, or have you been working too hard? <laughs> <laughs> For me, uh, definitely mountain biking out in the tech trails. I'm doing that all the time out there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, or just like running, because there's really nice paths that run right by the water, the portage around here, but it's just a gorgeous area outside. Yeah, I've done a lot of waterfall hiking this summer, so there's so many of them around here it's really easy to just drive up north and you know kind of pull off on a side trail and walk a little ways and you'll probably stumble upon a waterfall the trip that i always think is really cool and um, i'm based in chicago so i always wish i was here when they do it but they do um, a kayak tour of some of the lighthouses in the area and some of the lighthouses you can't get to except for by boat so it's really kind of a cool way to explore some of what we have to offer up here. So you don't have to be outdoorsy to come to Michigan Tech, but if you are, it's definitely a great place to do that. So, oh, good question. Are there people who can teach you how to kayak? Definitely great because um, we have trained experts that, that teach how-tos in kayaking or rock climbing, or if you've never backpacked before, they'll do some trips for beginners, um, so it's not so intense, and they'll teach you how to pack your pack and um, how to survive in the wilderness. They run a lot of programming, so it's not just about equipment rental or trips. They also do a lot of programming. It's a really neat space and um, some great people to work with. And if you want to head to Mont Ripley, but you don't know how to ski or snowboard, we have actually um, gym or PE classes that you can take um, starting at the beginning level for learning how to snowboard and ski. So those are really, really fun. <laughs> so just as a reminder, if you do have questions, feel free to pop them up and we can ask them along the way or answer them along the way. Oop, we got another one. Just. Is there much free time to do all these activities? That's a great question. And I think time management is something that all of our first year students have to find that delicate balance. So how, what are some of the ways that you found to be able to ex get enough free time to explore these opportunities? Well, um, so in my classes, I'd be pretty much done with classes in the afternoon. Um, but after that, it's pretty much up to you with what you want to do with all your free time. You'll definitely have a lot more free time than in high school. Um, you don't have as many at home responsibilities or other after school stuff I found going on. So I uh, definitely want to get your homework done first, but there was plenty of time for me to, you know, go outside with people um, or just hang out with people in the residence halls. Uh, my weekends were usually pretty much free, though, to do whatever I wanted with them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was the same. <laughs> yeah. We also had a question about alpine racing, and we do have a club team here at Michigan Tech. So it's not one of our Division II sports, which Nordic skiing is, but we do have a club team here at Michigan Tech. So that is something that you could participate in. 
So since we've been around since 1885, we do have some great campus traditions. What's your favorite campus tradition? I would say broom ball is definitely <laughs> up there. Do you want to tell them what broom ball is? That's kind of something yeah. that might be. Um, I think the best way to understand it fundamentally is sort of as a poor man's hockey. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've never so, heard of that. So we um, construct three ice rinks out on the front lawn here at school and um, there's webcams set up and so what you do is you get in teams of maybe a dozen or so people and you put on tennis shoes and knee pads and you take a corn broom, saw off the bristles and wrap the whole thing in duct tape and then you put on a helmet and you run around on the ice hitting this ball trying to get it into the net or the goal and um, it's a lot of fun and it's a big big community kind of event where if someone you know has a game you'll go out and watch them and cheer for them even if it's you know kind of chilly outside or if it's too chilly you can sit in your room and watch them on your screen because the webcams cast it all but it's a really 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 fun thing. Or your parents can watch the webcast too, Yes, and yeah. watch your games. So yeah. how about yourself? What's your favorite campus tradition? Uh, the favorite, favorite thing that I do, um, or at least I did last year, with just Winter Carnival, the whole thing was really awesome. But what I spent a lot of time was doing was working on our snow statue. And it was just, it's kind of cold and you're working out there. Um, my gloves and everything would just turn to ice because I'd be spraying hose on the water and then everything freezes. So it was really cold but it was awesome to just get out in the snow and that's actually I'm not a big winter person, but when I was out there playing in the snow, like that's what made me accept it. And it's awesome that we just we just have fun in the snow out here. But just seeing kind of these structures build up from nothing, and you don't know what they're <laughs> going to turn into the like a week before they're all kind of due. Um, but that was just a lot of fun. And our statue actually won first place for our division, so spent a lot of time working hard on that. Um. I think one of the coolest campus traditions we have is the Parade of Nations, which kind of celebrates where our international students are coming from with lots of fun music and costumes and dancing and it's really a great release and to see where some of our students are coming from and for us to know a little bit more about where they're coming from and what cultures and they're coming from. Right now they're doing some nice, we do have some questions here. So how many students have a car on campus? I think it's about 70%. Um, our students pay $100 for the year in order to park on campus, so as far as that's concerned, that is um, a great, I think, a great deal, so it's kind of nice. So, um, we also have another question about, can you talk about homecoming and the cardboard boat races? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> yeah. So homecoming, you know, traditionally always at the beginning of the year. Um, there's a lot of events that go on. Um, in the residence halls, there's something, what is it called? Um, schoolyard games, I think it's called. So all the residence halls compete against each other in games like sack races and water balloon tosses. And those go on for a couple days. It's particularly nice that it's at the beginning of the year because it's a really good chance to get to know people that you're living next to. And it's a really, you know, fun way to get to know people. Um, and then, yeah, cardboard boat. You spend usually a couple nights with a group of people taping all the cardboard together and making sure it's not going to leak. And then at the end, you are allowed to spray paint it, but no other coatings on the end. And um, hauling them all down to chutes and ladders, which is the park down by the water, and watching them all race. So. Or, or sink. Or yeah, sink. Them do. Or sink. <laughs> Um, another question, can freshmen have cars on campus? And yes, they can. So at Michigan Tech, you are allowed to bring a car to campus, so that is nice. Um, it's not necessary. We actually have a bus service in town that takes you around. A lot is within walking distance. And with about 70% of our students having cars on campus, too, it's possible that your roommate or your next-door neighbor or someone near you will also have a car. It's funny how, you know, trips to the grocery store and Walmart and such all of a sudden become a big affair in college, yeah. right? <laughs> it's kind of a social event. If someone's going to Walmart, everyone's like, oh, me too! Right. Yeah, first year, I didn't have a car on campus. Uh, I didn't really need it. I didn't have a bike either. Uh, so yeah, you find like a kid in your hall who has a car, and you all go to Walmart together. Mm -hmm. um, but even just getting home wasn't a problem, because you can look online and everyone will post on the ride board, and there are just plenty of kids that are always carpooling and stuff down there. So all the times that I went home, I just carpooled with somebody, and that worked out fine still. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. So uh, we talked a little bit. We do have a Division One men's ice hockey team, so those games are pretty fun. Yeah. Um, our hockey team is great, and our pet band is great as well. So um, definitely want to come and see that, whether it's for the hockey or for the pet band. Right. Both are 
quite fun, right? I, um, I played with Pep Band in the fall semester and they are definitely a crazy group of kids. Uh, you'll recognize them by their kind of black and white or yellow and black uh, striped overall things they wear. Um, but they don't require any auditions and they don't even really require you to play an instrument. Like people come in with kazoos or just like banging spoons. Uh, anything that makes noise, they'll take you. I always enjoy the bagpipes. Yeah, they have a bagpipe player too. Awesome. Yeah, there's a whole lot of fun that we have um, with both Pet Band and our, our hockey team has been doing really well, so that's great too. We also have Division II sports, um, and you can see the full list there. So those games are going really well too. So it's always fun to cheer on fellow Huskies, and um, it's great camaraderie here. A lot of the community members come out for the events as well. So um, we do have another question. Are there activities to do that are not outdoors? Definitely. So we have um, a great sports complex here, so if you're really into activities but don't want to do them outdoors, that um, the tennis center, things like that. If you're not an active person and want to do um, things that maybe aren't sports related, we have great religious organizations, cultural organizations, community service organizations. Um, we have fraternity and sororities here on campus. Um, with 230 student organizations, there's just a little bit of everything. So um, a lot of the professional societies do different events throughout the year. So whether it's with, um, Society of Women Engineering or any of the national organizations that we have here, um, there's a lot of um, opportunities. And on the weekends, too, we have movies that play. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, so in our biggest lecture hall, we turn it into a movie theater on the weekends. So that's a really popular um, activity that a lot of people do because it's three dollars for a ticket and it's movies that aren't yet out on DVD just got out of theaters so they're pretty recent and so uh, on the weekends that's a lot of stuff. Okay we also have another question about dorm life here at Michigan Tech and just so you know all of our first year students are required to live in the residence hall for a year and then um, it's two years if you're on academic scholarship and so we do have a great residential community here at Michigan Tech. And so you want to talk a little bit um, about the residence halls you've lived in? Um, yeah. You know what it's all about? Maybe talk about what hall you've lived in. And um, yeah, so I lived in the residence halls for two years here. I lived in West McNair Hall. Um, so I really enjoyed my time. Uh, you get to know the people that you're living next to, the people in your hall, the people in your building really well. Um, I made a lot of good friends. So. We would have, um, throughout the entire building, on different nights of the week, different halls would put on events. So Sunday night, we would go down to um, Bastille and we'd get snow cones. And on Thursday nights, you go up to the fourth floor and they have grilled cheese. And so everyone just kind of, you know, there's these big social events that go on. And I, I don't know, I've really enjoyed living in the residence halls. Mm -hmm. I lived in Wadsworth my first year and then I'm also living there next year again. Uh, Wadsworth is like our biggest residence hall, but I still really loved it in there. Uh, just because it's like really convenient and close to campus is nice. Um, but then also their food. I really enjoy their food because they mix up their menu a lot and they always have a ton of food, like really good there. Uh, so I will say watch out for the fresh from 15 because uh, their <laughs> meal plans are unlimited too. So you can go in the meal anytime you want, you can eat. And there's always ice cream. Yeah, there's always, <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> there's always a lot of ice cream and a lot of desserts. But I really like the community feeling because you meet so many kids um, your first year. Because I was the only kid from my high school that came up here, so I didn't know anybody coming up here. Um, but I made a ton of awesome friends from the residence halls. Do you have any tips of what are some good items to bring for your dorm room? Um, I would say bring a fan with you. Uh, the first week during orientation week, it's still summertime up here, which believe it or not is kind of warm. Um, and so definitely nice to have a fan with you. Anything yeah. else that you Think of? Nope. Uh, <laughs> if you think of something else, we'll let you know, but yeah. that's definitely for sure um, something to think about. So let's talk a little bit about the admission process. So many of you have not applied or maybe you're just starting your application. So our application is free. It's online. So we start reviewing applications September 1st and we're enrolling admissions, which means that once we start reviewing, we just continuously review. So as we get your file, which would be your application, your test scores, which could be ACT or SAT, we don't care. Um, and if you have multiple scores, feel free to send them in. We can figure out what are the best scores and your transcripts from your high school, or if you're a transfer student, we'll also need your college transcripts. So if you can send that in to us, 
Uh, we'll review everything, and in about three weeks, we'll be able to get you an answer. Now, our Visual Performing Arts Department, some of those programs do have additional requirements, um, some portfolios, letter of recommendation, things like that. So if you're looking at any of those majors, make sure to take a look on our application for what they are expecting. Um, so if you have any questions about the application process, feel free to shoot a little chat up here and I can answer those questions for you. Um, your application for admission is also your application for scholarship, so I want to talk a little bit about the cost here at Michigan Tech. What's new to us this year is what we call as plateau tuition. And what that means is anything you're taking from 12 to 18 credit hours is at the same cost, and you can see those costs there and the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition, room and board, and things like that. What's nice about plateau tuition is it's based on an average of a, just over four, between 14 and 15 credit hours. So um, you're able to take these classes that you need for your major, but it does give you the flexibility to maybe take an additional course of something that you're interested in or to make sure that you're having um, funds aren't the reason why you're not taking enough courses that semester. And so it really gives you some opportunities to experiment or possibly work a little harder if you want to, and that's okay. Um, let's see, we have a question. How easy is it to transfer college credits that you earn in high school? So if you're taking something that's maybe a dual enrollment course or something that you've taken at the community college, all you need to do is send us the transcript from that college that you've taken it at or that you're receiving credit from if you're actually taking the course in your high school but receiving college credit. And we can evaluate that just as we would um, if you were transferring in from that community college itself. So just make sure that we get those transcripts. You do need to have a C or higher in those classes as you would if you were transferring any, and any other transfer credit. Can we talk about leading scholar award? I definitely will and I actually have a whole slide about that in a few minutes. So just hold tight real quick. We have a question about laptops. So do you have to buy a school laptop or do you bring your own? What would be better, Apples or Window? Uh, we do not have a laptop program here at Michigan Tech, so you are not required to buy a laptop as part of your program. I know many of you might be building your own computers or have preferences of what you prefer. Um, do you want to talk about computers on campus and how that works? All right. Um, I had a laptop here, but yeah, you're not required to have one your first year. Um, a lot of the lab computers, which they're just lab computers everywhere, all over campus, they'll have all the programs that you need for all your classes, and they're really nice, fast computers. So those are always available for you to use. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as like Windows versus Mac, I'll say at least all the engineering programs, um, you probably want a Windows PC, um, just because like sometimes they won't work with Macs. But a lot of kids had them; it was kind of a mix. Yeah, it really depends on what department you're in. I'd say there's a I've seen a big mix of them on campus. Mm -hmm. so. But we even have like a Unix Linux you know, group here on campus too. Mm -hmm. So no matter what your computer is running, um, we'll find people to help support it here too. So mm -hmm. uh, we have some questions about undergraduate research opportunities. So um, we do have one big official program, our SURF program, our summer undergraduate research fellowship program. But what's nice is we are a research facility. And so research is happening on our campus quite often. And our faculty members are always looking for undergraduates to help with that, partially because we only have a thousand graduate students. So a lot of times they need some of those undergraduates to help out with that. So that's definitely something that we look into. Uh, many of our students also take um, advantage of other um, research that's going on um, over the summer at many other places, maybe at Argonne Lab or Fermi Lab or things like that too. So we actually had. 89,000 hours of paid undergraduate research here last year, just so that you know. So there's definitely a lot of paid research going on on campus. And if you're interested in doing some, a research for a specific area or a specific type of thing, um, it's really easy to talk to professors that are involved in those programs. And like you mentioned, they're usually looking for people to help out. So they're typically, if you tell a professor you want to do research, they're excited and they want to help you do it. Okay. So I'm going to go back to financial aid, but if you have any other questions, feel free and we'll just answer them as we go along. So uh, many of our students here at Michigan Tech do receive some sort of financial aid. Many of them um, receive either academic credit or it might be need-based financial aid. 
So academic scholarship program, I have an in-state slide and an out-of-state slide, so I can talk a little bit about how those programs work, and then I'll get to that national scholars program. So thank you for um, being patient with me, um, Jacob. So the President Scholars Program ranges from uh, $1,500 to $4,500. It's based off of your GPA, ECT, and class rank. If you go out to our financial aid website, there's a, what's called the net cost calculator. You can plug in your GPA, ECT, or SAT scores in your class rank and actually see what you might qualify for. So it's pretty um, obvious. So we try and make sure that you can see what those options are. You don't have to do anything else but complete your application for admission to qualify for these awards. Uh, we do have what's called the Michigan Alumni Legacy Award. So if your parent or grandparent is a Michigan Tech alum, if you're in-state, you'll also receive an additional $1,000. And If you're thinking about transferring from a community college, you need to have above 24 credit hours in order to receive the transfer scholarship, which is um, ranges from $1,500 to $3,000 based on your college GPA. For non-Michigan residents, you'll see it's a pretty similar setup, but the dollar amounts are different. As you saw earlier, there's a little bit of a difference between in-state and out-of-state tradition, or tuition, not tradition. Um, and so this will help maybe close that gap a little bit. First-year students can receive anywhere between $7,000 to $12,500. And again, that's still based off of your GPA, ACT, or SAT scores, or class rank. And we do use your application to to look at this. Now for that $12,500, you need to have above a 3.0 GPA, which is about the baseline for most of our scholarships, and above about a 27 ACT um, to receive that. Now for transfer students, again, in order to receive transfer credit, you need to have at least 24 credit hours, and it's based off of your college GPA, so that ranges from $4,000 to $7,000, depending on what that GPA is. Now alumni, uh, if you're if you have a child or um, grandchild, or if you are the child or grandchild or of an alum, you actually receive in-state tuition, which is a nice little perk. And if your parent is in the military or your spouse is in the military, regardless of where you're stationed, you're going to receive in-state tuition, which is nice too. So now, thank you, Jacob, for waiting. We'll talk about our leading scholar program. Now, this is the only scholarship program that you're going to have to do some extra work for, okay? So as far as that's concerned, you need to apply before October 15th of your senior year, and there is an essay question and a letter of recommendation that you need to do. If you're an incoming senior this, or if you're going to be a senior in high school this year and you go out on our website at the Leading Scholars Award, you will see that it's still from last year. They're updating the application, but the question is still the same. So if you would like to start on your essay before all of your papers roll in when you get back to school, definitely you can do that over the summer. So the um, essay question's there, so check out the Leading Scholars website that you can see at the bottom of the slide. Now we have 30 Michigan residents and 10 non-Michigan residents that will be selected to come up the first week in December to compete for the top scholarship programs. And you can see kind of how that works out as far as how many you're getting them, whether they're in-state or out-of-state. And it's really nice because our Michigan residents will be getting tuition, room and board, plus a $1,000 stipend. Our non-Michigan residents will be receiving non-resident tuition, um, full non-resident tuition. So it's really a great program that we have here. It is a little competitive, and it does have an earlier deadline. So I think that's what catches most people up. So make sure you work hard on that essay. It can definitely set you apart from the crowd. Um, and it's nice because all the scholarships that I've talked about, too, are renewable, so um, this is no exception to that. So that's really the, the, the biggest part of what we have here. Um, we've talked mostly about our academics. We've talked a little bit about housing here on campus. We've talked a little bit about um, the scholarship opportunities and the application process. Is there anything I missed? <laughs> okay. Does anyone else have any other questions? I know we have about 15 minutes, but unless there's any big, dire questions, we can also end early. So does anyone have anything that we've missed that you'd like to talk about? Let me look through here, make sure we answered everyone's questions. <laughs> It was about winter. What are the winters really like here at Michigan Tech? So you guys want to talk about that? 
Yeah, um, so we definitely have a lot of snow up here. Average snowfall is over 200 inches. This last winter in particular was a spectacular one with over 300 inches of snow. So you can expect when you come up that you will have, you know, there will be snow, you'll need boots, jackets, um, but it's really not that cold and there's so much that we do with it. Like, we see winter just as, kind of as a big celebration around here. It's given off by um, Winter Carnival, kind of tells you. It's, I know, it's a lot of fun and it's really not that harsh. <laughs> right, yeah, I think winter was like the most intimidating part of coming up here, but the winter wasn't too bad. Um, even last year, yeah, it was crazy, like record-breaking winter. But, I mean, you survive because everybody's still, they're out experiencing the same thing of you. And it's just like classes and hanging out with friends and stuff. It's a little bit of a distraction from the winter. Mm -hmm. Although, because we don't have any tunnels on campus, so you will have to get outside for a little bit. Um, most of the academic buildings are nice and connected, though. Uh, but I will say I never really worn scarves before I came up here, but then I became a scarf person. They were really nice. You could actually be outside and still breathe. But uh, they're not as bad. Uh, a lot of kids are going through like the same thing. And just... mm -hmm. We did get a question. Did you ever get a snow day? Good year to ask. Yes. Um, yeah, we actually did get a snow day this year, and it was the day of our career fair, which was kind of cool because um, they still held the career fair and kept sort of a clear path between the career fair, fair is held up in our sports complex. So they pretty much kept a clear path from the residence halls to the sports complex so that everyone could get up to the career fair. So no one had any excuse um, for classes or whatnot. So it was actually one of our best attended career fair um, career fairs we ever had because um, it was snowing buckets that day. So. I remember that. <laughs> I still need to watch kids come up like in business suits and then big snow boots. Yeah. <laughs> suits and ski goggles I think yeah. is my favorite combination. <laughs> um, it's actually pretty unusual for us to get a snow day here. We're pretty equipped to deal with um, good amounts of snow and most of the time our snow comes pretty consistently. We will get a few bigger um, dumps a couple of times throughout the year but for the most part um, we're able to to um, deal with it pretty well. So um, we kind of lucked out this year that it just happened to be the day of our career fair. So our students kind of got the day off to go search out their careers. But it happens on occasion, but it's a rare occasion. Mm -hmm. Any other questions this evening? Okay, well, it doesn't look like we have any more, so we're going to wrap up a few minutes early. Thank you so much for taking the time to come up. This will be streaming live. Um, we'll have a link up that'll go on our Facebook page and a couple. And maybe the next day or so. So if you want to go back and look at any of our answers or can't remember what we said, um, definitely you can refer back to that. If you have any additional questions, um, definitely give us a call and we can get you more information. But if you haven't visited campus, that's really the best way to see what Michigan Tech is all about. And Maybe come up, be brave, come up in the winter, and um, you get VIP passes as part of your tour here on campus. So it gives you access to our ski hill or sports complex, or if you come up here still in the summer, to our golf course, our mineral museum, which is really cool. Um, also, we have ho um, hockey games and sporting events that you'll have access to and theater performances. So whatever it is that you really like to do, um, check out our calendar and figure out what it is. We even have adventure visits, which are opportunities for you that we're talking about kayaking and stuff. Um, we'll have some opportunities for you to be able to, to do that. Um, to set up a visit, it's right on our website. And there's a visit link right off of the admissions um, page. And they show you our open houses that are coming up. We have our big open house coming up at the end of September. Um, the adventure visit days will be listed and what's, doing, what's going on there. It'll also talk about any local events that we have going on. Um, maybe there's opportunities to meet some of your reps for coffee or ice cream, or maybe we're having a reception near you. So keep, keep a look at that visit page. There's going to be a lot of different opportunities for you to come either to campus or in the local area. But really getting here and seeing yeah. the snow or seeing the experience and getting to know some of our students and meet with our faculty I think is really the best way. So any other last minute questions? Ooh. What do you think sets Michigan Tech apart from other schools? Okay, I'll let you guys go. I know this one's kind of one, kind of a deep question. Then, <laughs> yeah. <here>, so. <laughs> um, so just some things I remember from talking to my friends who went off to like bigger state schools and stuff. It's just like the size of the campus because walking between classes is really short walks, um, and then there's like you get really close with your professors, kids in your class, and it's 
a smaller size university and I really like that about here. And then something I took kind of for granted about the area is that it's a really safe campus. Uh, so me per personally, I feel really safe walking and like the middle of the night through campus or just kind of leaving my stuff out. I'm not worried about it getting taken immediately like I know some other kids will worry about that or going outside at night, but it's just a really nice area up here definitely. I feel like kind of what sets us apart is that we all feel really like a community up here, at least to me we do. Um, you know, it's not like a school where you're just you're just a number or a little person walking around in a sea of people because there, we have a decent number of students, but you know, there's a certain element about everyone when they choose to come to Tech that, I don't know, just I feel like we're a really close community up here. I think part of that and what I think sets it apart is sometimes our location and not only for the outdoor adventure and things like that, but most of our students that are coming here are traveling quite a distance. So they're really ready to embrace the experience. Academically, they want to get involved, they want a top-notch school, but they also want that social aspect. And so I think that's really what builds the great community here. So, And our students are pretty driven. They're doing really cool things in research and design. I'm amazed every day when I'm reading the news articles that come out about what our students and our faculty are working on. It's really a great university that way. So I just want to thank you all again for joining us. If you do have additional questions, just definitely email us and please come to campus. We'd love to meet you in person. Um, have a great night and hopefully we'll talk soon. Thanks.